All right, in this video, we're going to start talking about some basic exponential functions, and we're going to get into exponential growth, exponential decay, and looking at some key features of both graphs. So your basic exponential function graph looks like this, which is really straightforward. It's b to the x. Now, we can, of course, change it. We can transform it. That's something we're going to talk about later on in some other videos. Um, but when we talk about growth... We're going to give some examples here. And I'm going to give you a couple of different, different examples. So let's say g of x is equal to 3 to the x. That is an example of growth. And h of x is equal to 2.5 to the x. Those are both examples of growth. Now, what's true about growth functions? The b value has to be greater than one any value greater than one but as long as your b value is greater than one you have some form of a growth function so three here 2.5 here those are both greater than one that is growth all right let's take a look at decay functions so examples of decay functions you could have let's say k of x is equal to one half to the x and let's say you could also have uh, p of x is equal to, uh, let's see, 0 0.025 to the x. Right, I'm just making up examples here. Um, but what's true about both of these is that b is less than 1 but greater than 0. So it's somewhere between 0 and 1. You can have fractions, you can have decimals, doesn't really matter but the value has to be between zero and one. All right, and you'll notice none of these are equal, right? This is not equal to either. Um, so one thing with exponential functions is your B value. So B cannot be negative, all right? Just cannot be negative. Uh, B cannot be zero. All right, and B, whoops, let me actually try and write this in the right order, cannot be one. Um, negative, you don't have a smooth continuous curve, which causes some problems. Um, if you have zero to any power, you have zero. Um, so basically at that point, you don't have exponential, you just would have literally a horizontal line, not terribly useful. Um, and B cannot equal one. Uh, it's actually for the same reason. Zero to any, I'm sorry, one to any power is still one. And so if you have uh, B uh, one to the X power, uh, you would literally just have a horizontal line. Again, not an exponential function. All right. So that's kind of the basics of growth and decay. Let's actually get in and look at some growth and decay here. Um, so we've got four functions. We've got um, four to the x, two thirds to the x, one fourth to the x, and three halves to the x. And the first thing we wanna do is categorize it as either growth or decay. Two of them are growth, two of them are decay. Um, so it's pretty easy to find the one of the growth functions, which is f of x equals four to the x. That is absolutely growth. All right, our b value there is clearly greater than one. It's a b value of four. So I'm gonna take this function here and I'm gonna put it in this first little section. So this is gonna equal four to the x. And I'm gonna graph it. And I'm gonna use a little table of values here. So I'm gonna take four to the negative one. I'm gonna do four to the zero and four to the first. I'm actually gonna do this kind of in reverse order. Four to the first is just four. Um, anything raised to the zero power is going to be one. And this one's a little strange, but anything, uh, a negative power here actually means you're gonna have a reciprocal. So instead of four to the negative one, you actually, that turns into um, one fourth power. Um, negative powers, I'm sorry, one fourth is the uh, answer. Negative powers do not mean that you get negative answers. All right, so just be aware of that. So if I were to graph this, uh, let's see, I've got negative one here, one here. I know zero is here, so one, two, three, four. 
All right, so negative one, one fourth. So I'm gonna go negative one here, but then I'm only gonna go just a little bit above the y axis. Uh, I'm gonna use a little orange point right here. Eh, it's close enough. Uh, zero, one is gonna be right here, and then one positive four is right here. So this function, this graph, it's going to look like this, it's going to curve up through our points. Now, what you want to be careful about is when you go to do this part to the left, as I said, negative um, exponents, and that's what these x values are, is exponents. Negative exponents give us fractional answers, not negative answers. So this orange curve is actually going to stay above the um, axis. It's going to approach it. It's going to get really close to it, but it's never going to cross it. All right, so just be aware of that. All right, so there's our first function, our first little growth function here. Now, if we take a look at the next one, this B value, this two thirds value, is it more than one or less than one? That's what we gotta think of. Um, two thirds is in fact less than one. That is a decay function. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this function over here for decay. So F of X equals, two-thirds to the x, and I'm going to use my table of values again. So this is going to be two-thirds to the negative one, two-thirds to the zero, and two-thirds to the one. All right, so if I start at the top here, two-thirds to the negative one is going to be the reciprocal of this fraction. So instead of two over three, I'm going to have three over two. Uh, by the way, if you're not a huge fan of fractions, uh, three over two is the same thing as 1.5. All right, just be aware of that. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Two thirds to the zero power, well, that's gonna be one. And then two thirds to the one is just the number itself, two thirds. All right, so if I mark this out, all right, one, negative one, one, two, three. That is a horrible three. Let's try that again, there we go. All right, so at negative one, I'm actually at 1.5. So negative one, uh, I'll go with green on this one. Negative one, 1.5 here, zero, uh, one, and then one, two thirds. So it kind of, it, it's what you wanna pay attention to is this is actually going to increase to the left here and decrease to the right. So the curve is gonna come in something like that, all right? Um, so as these exponents would get um, larger and larger negatives, we would get larger and larger positive values for f of x. As we get larger and larger positive um, exponents, we're actually gonna get smaller and smaller fractions or closer and closer to zero. So this is considered decay because as you look at it, the graph is decreasing um, so that's a decay function, whereas growth is clearly increasing. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. F of X is equal to 1 4th X. Well, 1 4th X, that is absolutely going to be a decay function. Uh, 1 4th is definitely less than one. So let's go ahead and mark this one decay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that function, which I now can't see, <laughs> down here in the decay function set. So f of x is equal to 1 fourth to the x. All right. So that's going to give me 1 fourth to the negative 1, 1 fourth to the 0, and 1 fourth to the first. So 1 fourth to the negative 1, remember that's going to flip that fraction over. It becomes 4. Uh, 1 fourth to the 0 is 1, and 1 fourth to the first is just 1 fourth. All right, so if we mark this one, negative one, two, three, four here. All right, so negative one, four. I'll mark this in green. Negative one, four is somewhere up here. Uh, one, zero, and one, one, fourth. So that is a definite decay function, right? As I look at that graph, it is dropping off drastically as we move to the right. All right, it's a decreasing function. All right, last one, at least for this section, is 
Um, f of x is equal to three over two x. Now, one of the things that I want you to be very careful about is being three over two, yes, I know that's a fraction, not all fractions are less than one. If you were to actually take this, this is an improper fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator, um, improper fractions are greater than one. And so if you were to actually divide three divided by two, you would get um, 1.5 and 1.5 to the x is greater than uh, one. All right, so this is a growth function. So that's growth. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that down where my last function goes here, f of x is equal to three halves to the x. All right, so same thing I've been doing. We're gonna have three halves to the negative one. We're gonna have three halves to the zero and three halves to the first. The power of negative one here is going to flip this fraction over. So this is gonna be two thirds. Um, I'm actually gonna slide that over. So hold on one second. So two thirds, if you prefer it in decimal form, this is gonna be 0.6 repeating or 0.66, 0.67, somewhere in that range. Uh, three halves to the zero power, any number raised to zero power is one. And then raising something to the first power is just the thing that you started with. So it's gonna be three halves, which is also equal to 1.5. All right, let's go ahead and mark that out. One, negative one, one and two. All right, so if I do negative one and then 0.6, I'm gonna go negative one and a little bit, you know, a little bit more than halfway between um, zero and one. So I'd say about right there. Uh, zero, one, and one, 1.5. So my curve, it's not terribly steep, but it is a growth curve. It's just not, so if I compare my two growth curves, this curve to this one, this curve is growing, I don't wanna say exponentially more, exponentially more quickly because they're both exponential, but it is drastically growing um, faster than this one is in the same way that this curve is actually um, slower in terms of its decay than this curve is, all right? So the um, closer you are to zero for your decay functions, the steeper it is, and the farther away from one you are, the much steeper your growth is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the video here. Um, so this is a quick example, or a bunch of quick examples for growth and decay. Um, the second video I will do will actually get into um, a whole bunch of the key features. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns.